Have you seen the series Jujutsu Kaisen? Do you know what domain expansion is? No? You imbecile. Curse you, you will probably say. And I would comment. You are getting there without even knowing what this show is about. Because this show is all about curses. But not with the usual sense of a curse. This is about cursed energy and the manifestation of beings consisting entirely of cursed energy. So in this universe, which is the number 732 anim version of the multiverse, there are powerful sorcerers who are fighting these curses. These sorcerers are called Jujutsu sorcerers and perhaps they might even know Ninjutsu, who knows? One of these Jujutsu sorcerers is a cynical guy called Nanami, who is a quarter Danish, and that's why he has blonde hair. Or maybe he just likes to dye his hair blonde, I don't know. Anyway, this guy called Nanami is a grade 1 sorcerer, which means he is very powerful and can easily defeat grade 1 curses. There is a whole system of classification of sorcerers, curses and cursed weapons that I won't go into depth. However, no matter how powerful this guy is as a sorcerer and how smart, logical and methodical he really is, he could never achieve what is considered the pinnacle of Jujutsu sorcery. What is the pinnacle of Jujutsu sorcery? To lay out your own inner domain with a technique called Ryoki Tenkai or else domain expansion. To lay out one's inner domain is a very powerful technique and only a select few sorcerers have ever achieved it. Does that mean that Nanami is not considered one of the few? Yes is the answer, only to be followed by yet another question. Why? Well, let's find out. Domain expansion is the pinnacle of Jujutsu battles and from what we can see from this show one needs to have a very deep understanding of Jujutsu sorcery, their own techniques and ultimately themselves. Does Nanami have the potential for domain expansion even if he has not yet achieved it? Perhaps. However, does he have a deep understanding of himself? Early on in the series, we can see that he is a very logical, methodical and structured type of personality. He lacks routines and is very precise with his methods. Even his Jujutsu technique is based on cutting with precision. Nanami is someone who is focused on detail and he would make an excellent scientist if he was not a sorcerer. Nanami's focus indicates a person who uses his left hemisphere a lot since the latter is responsible for logic, language and details. The left hemisphere is what science calls the analytical mind. The right hemisphere on the other hand is the part of the brain that is responsible for feelings, imagination, intuition and the capacity to see the bigger picture. The right hemisphere processes information laterally rather than linearly. People who do a lot of self-reflection, practice yoga, meditation or are involved in spirituality or generally people who have a deeper understanding of themselves achieve a state where both hemispheres work together and synchronize with each other. It is my theory that for a sorcerer to achieve domain expansion he or she needs to be in this state of mind as a prerequisite. And that is where we can see that Nanami is not the artistic, imaginative type. Therefore, it is my theory that this is the reason why he cannot lay out his domain. And this makes sense. The inner domain of a sorcerer, in order to be expanded into reality, needs for the sorcerer to have a very active imagination, which in turn indicates a very active right hemisphere. On top of that, Nanami himself 
has made a pact where he limits his own cursed energy. I am not entirely sure why he is doing this, but limiting oneself is not the way to expand oneself, if that makes sense. So there you have it. This is why Nanami cannot expand his domain, because of his imbalance in his aptitudes. The question is, can he finally achieve it, if he had known this information? Careful spoilers ahead. Personally, I believe that he eventually could achieve domain expansion, supposing he experienced certain life-changing events that made him grow even more. I think that if he survived the Shibuya incident, he would have ended up a lot more powerful and with the potential to change perspectives and unlock domain expansion. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. Well, unless it does kill us, then we're dead. Or maybe we will end up stronger in our next life, who knows. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time.